Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. As we continue a series called The Chaotic Christmas, today is going to be a little unique. Because today we're going to talk about the scars that we have in the midst of our Christmas season. And then we're going to have a modified service and then um, we're going to do some special things for a very special family that is going through major loss this week. And we're going to uh, do a, a balloon launch on behalf of Emily and then come back in and, and have a memorial service and then a dinner for the self family and for their church family and for their individual families. But as I was thinking this week as scars and pain has taken place in our lives, what do we do with those scars and those pains? So often we can see the physical scars that we get through maybe surgeries or accidents or maybe even a fight that you may get a scar from. And you see those physical scars and they're prevalent within your body. And many of you I've visited in the hospital, had surgery, open heart surgery, and you have that scar that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. Scars that are on the outside of the body are badges of pain that you can see, that you can understand. Pain. We all experience pain. We all experience pain in different ways and we all allow that pain to be expressed in many different ways. Sometimes we are boisterous and out loud, and sometimes we are quiet and reserved. Sometimes we allow that pain to build up within our lives so much that it's an explosion. And then we feel guilty about allowing that pain to be brought forth. Sometimes pain can ruin us. Sometimes we can be so affected by the pain in our lives that we, are not, we are never allow God to utilize our experiences for His glory and His honor. So today, as we talk about scars, we're going to talk about two different aspects of scars. The physical scars that we and the Apostle Paul, by example, has gone through. And then something that's much deeper than the physical scars that can heal will be the emotional scars that we hide, we ignore. Many of us try to act like they don't take place and we put a mask on our face and we try to hide every scar that we've ever gone through. And around the Christmas holidays, many times our families have scars and our families, we try to put a smile on our face and we act like everything's wonderful. But inwardly, we are dying, we are hurting. Maybe it's because of relationship issues or financial issues. Or maybe it's because of a loss. Maybe for the very first time at the Christmas season, there's going to be an empty seat at the table. Maybe for the very first time that you're going through something that's so catastrophic that you really don't want to share with your life, with your family and your friends. Because the emotional pain of turmoil is so deep within your soul, you just don't know what to do. What do we do when our scars of our life are so overwhelming within our life that we help, we feel like we have no hope and help. Paul has given us a great example. And in Paul's life in Galatians, he has written to us a certain phrase that says, I bear on my body the marks of Jesus, the scars of Jesus. Paul has given us a great example of how many marks or scars that he has put upon his life for the cause of Christ. And sometimes when we look about what Christ has done for us, we have marks. The word stigmata is a word used to bear the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the definition... In terms used by the members of the Christian faith to describe the body marks, sores, or sensations of pain in location corresponding to the crucifixion wounds of Jesus Christ. And as I was sitting this week and thinking about how I can minister best to a church family and to an individual family, and when I read the stigmata of this, sores or sensations, sensations, the, the feelings, it's okay to cry. 
It's okay to laugh. It's okay to get mad. It's okay to question. Because we don't have all the answers. And we won't have all the answers until we go to heaven. But the wounds and the scars and the sensations of our life, the first thing I want to share with, scars tell us a story. The story of pain. Scars tells us the story. When you see somebody that has been in a wreck, I visited somebody just yesterday that, uh, that was in a major car wreck and he was laying in his bed and as I was looking he had scars and stitches on his head and a cast on his foot and he, uh, he hit a tree going about 60, 65 miles an hour. Luckily, he's even alive. But when you look at him and he was showing me scars, he was telling me about all the scars on his face, on his body and what has taken place within his life and he was telling me about all the scars and what the scars mean. I was thinking that, you know, every time he looks in a mirror and he sees that scar, he's going to remember the event that caused the scar. And sometimes we look at our life and we can put our life on rerun and we can see the scars that we have physically and we can remember exactly what we were doing at that moment. They're called physical scars. And the physical scars can be somewhat painful to look at. Sometimes we look at those scars and the pain that we went through at that moment can come back to our hearts and our minds inst instantaneously. But we look at the scar and we try to hide it and we try to put makeup over it or we try to cover it up because of embarrassment or because we just don't like the way it looks. Well, when you look at the physical scars, they're nothing compared to the emotional scars. From our hearts, from our lives, from the pain, from the agony. Many of us have come from broken homes. Many of us, our parents, have broken and they fight. Sometimes our relationships are scarred. And sometimes when we look at the Christmas season and and do you hear about everybody getting together for the Christmas season and everybody's going to be joyful and happy? And that's just not really the case in a lot of our families. A lot of our families at our church, when they go to the Christmas story and they go on a Christmas vacation, it isn't so wonderful. Sometimes the emotional scars and hurts are just a hidden factor within our life. See, emotional wounds are real. And a clinical psychologist by the name of Dr. Maxwell Maltz says this, every hurtful word said by someone you look up to, every humiliating episode, every mistake that you wish you could just forget about tends to stay in your mind. And those past experiences are constantly dwelt upon, constantly relived in a vivid detail to the point where you actually start feeling the same emotions as before. If you have that vivid emotional response, you may have experienced the serious emotional scar that needs to be dealt with. And if that emotional scar cannot be dealt with internally, we need to express our love and forgiveness and ask for help through a counselor, through a pastor, or through an organization. We have people in our church that work for a wonderful Christian organization called House of Hope. And we refer a lot of times people that have those emotional scars that need help. There's not. There's nothing they can do. Internally, they need somebody to help them, to encourage them. Sometimes late at night, sometimes we feel like there's no hope. And we start living our life on rerun. And we see things within our life that we wish never had happened. If I could have done this different, or I could have done that different. The constant rerun of the emotional scars start becoming bitterness within our life, and we do not know how to deal with the emotional scar. We need help. And that's where I believe Jesus comes into the picture. Because when we ask help, we can point people to a saving factor, and that saving factor is Jesus. Because when Jesus comes into our life, he may not heal the physical scars. 
He's not going to put a magic pill upon your life and you take that and all of your past is over. But he can get into your emotion. He can get into your life. And if you ask him, he can help you deal with the issues of life. Because we cannot fix past. God can forgive past. And there's a big difference. Because sometimes we in our finite minds, we want to look at our past and say, it never has taken place or I can't change it. And we start hiding or trying to live a life contrary to what we had. And all we're doing is putting that mask on, the facade of life, hoping nobody sees or nobody knows and just deal with life as it happens. But we haven't dealt with the emotion of pain. See, scars may be a sign of sacrifice. And when you look at sacrifice, you look at what Christ has done in the sacrificial lamb that he died on the cross for our sins, we understand that the scars that were put upon Jesus' life can also be the ones that heal our life. There's a book called Branded for Christ in which he writes, look closely at Paul, at the scarred body, that stooped figure of a man chastened by hunger kept down by fasting, and plowed through by the lictor's lash. This little body, brutally stoned in Lystra, and skinned, pickled for 36 hours in the Mediterranean Sea, finally count of 199 stripes, three shipwrecks, three beatings with rods, a stone of prison record, death so that many could count loss, and yet, what did he say? He said this, Our light affliction which is but for a moment, is working for us far more exceedingly in the eternal weight of glory. Branded for Christ. Whatever Paul went through within his life, the scars of his life and the emotional response of his life, he said, it is all but nothing for me to give God the glory because I know my end of my life is going to be in heaven with Christ and I am not going to sacrifice my short life of 70 years not to have glory in Christ to have what he has in store for us. See, there are kinds of marks. The first mark is the mark of ownership. Anytime in the Roman Empire or the Jewish Empire, they would have slaves. And those slaves would be marked with a mark of ownership. That the slave owner would mark that slave from that on, that he is that owner. And anytime that the slave would be released, he would be released by a mark to say that, that you were under my authority and now you're released from my authority. And sometimes in our ownership and sometimes when we are owned by Christ, the marks of Christ upon our life. See, the Bible says we've been bought by the price, the price of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed. And we give our life to Christ. We are owned by Christ. We are not our own anymore. And we need to give Christ all of our honor. It is his life. And I like this new phenomenon going around the cowboy church. Anybody ever been to a cowboy church? And I love the cowboy church. Most of the cowboy churches named are this. The cowboy church, the cross brand church. Because they believe in branding. The mindset is a branding of cattle. So when they brand that cattle, that cattle is branded to be the owner's cattle. And if that cattle would get out of their ranch they'd be able to go back into the owner's ranch, branded. And sometimes we as believers in Christ, we are branded. Now, how are we branded? We're not branded by the church that we go to. We're branded by the life that we live. And sometimes the, the author of our life allows us to go through things within our life for us to give glory in him through our pains and through our life. There's another type of mark. It's called the loyalty mark. Alexander the Great, he died at 32 years of age. But it was said that his soldiers would tattoo upon their hand the number Alpha, represented Alexander. And anyone that was caught as a prisoner of war that had that tattoo of Alexander upon his hand would be executed immediately. Alexander the Great tattooed for honor and they wore that tattoo with honor knowing that he was their general Paul wrote this to young Timothy endure hardship with us as a good soldier of Jesus Christ and sometimes we may not have a tattoo on our hand to represent who we honor 
But our life has tattoos written upon our life of pain and suffering for the cause of Christ. And then the mark of identity, the Savior. The mark of identity. The mark, the scar of identity. You know, many of us in the United States of America have never really had to sacrifice to be a Christian. Many of us here, we, we cause problems and we maybe have a little fight every once in a while. But going to a third world country where it's illegal to even fellowship as a body of believers and put to death for your faith or beheaded because of your faith, well, that's, that's a mark. That's a sacrifice. And sometimes in our first world country, we think everything is and should be so comfortable. But what happens when chaos hits? What happens when we get knocked off center? What happens when our utopia life decides not to be so fun? What do we do? Sometimes we just get upset and get mad at God. Sometimes we try to quit because of the scars, because of the emotion. You know, I wish I could answer the question why stupid things and bad things happen to good people. I wish I could answer the question why anyone would have to have loss. I wish I could answer why God allows very bad things to happen. And because of sin in the Garden of Eden, sin was planted upon this earth. And because of sin, man became very vile. And are guilty of sin. All of us are guilty of sin. There's none of us innocent. And because of that sin, death came to man. It's not your fault and it's not mine. It's God's plan for us to have the redemptive plan of Jesus Christ. When sin entered into this world, there had to be a plan for salvation. The Bible says all of us have sinned. The Bible says we're all going to die. Every one of us. He says, but after death comes the judgment. But when you look at life, you look at maybe somebody that's close to you that passes away or that's in the hospital or that maybe for some weird reason that we had no idea what was taking place has come down with terminal cancer. We had a friend of ours this week that just found out that she's in stage 2 cancer. She's getting ready to start chemo and radiation in the near future. Had another friend that just had a wreck that thought he was going to die. We have another family that is trying to have a baby that's 8 weeks early that's having contractions right now and they're very fearful of that baby. See, when you look at people's lives, there's a lot of junk. There's a lot of pain. We try to act like the Christian life and we act like Christmas time is full of utopia. And what we need is we need hope and we need help. And we need to know that the scars of this world are going to be real and genuine and we need help to get through this. Paul said this. I want to see the fellowship and suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. He understood that to be the believer that he needed to be, he's going to go through junk, sufferings within his life in order to be okay. But scars remind us that God can heal our wounds. They remind us that God can heal our wounds. Somebody said something to me one time that, they just got all over me. And I'm sure we've all said it. But it all depends in the setting in which it is said. Have you heard this? Time heals all wounds. Have you heard that? You know when you're in the middle of pain? That's not what you want to hear. Because in the midst of the pain, time feels like it is going by so fast. And you feel like you're stuck in a bubble. And the whole world 
is going in front of you at a fast pace and you're stuck and you can't get out of the bubble. And you look at time and time sometimes is not our friend. Time will not heal our wounds. Time will allow our wounds to become healed over time. But in the midst of our wound, just because time passes doesn't mean our wounds will be healed. There's only one way that we can heal our emotional wounds. There's only one way. And that way of healing has to be through forgiveness and God's love. Forgiveness and God's love. Because when we're in the midst of scars and emotion and hurts and pains, and those scars are so prevalent, and the pain is so real, the pain that loss, the pain of hurt, What do you do? You know, I was getting my car washed this week. And uh, uh, I, I was getting it washed. And uh, I was sitting to wait for it. And this young guy was cleaning the car. And I had my Bible on the front seat. And... Uh, he said, he said, I see you have a Bible in your front seat. And I said, yeah, I, I'm a pastor over at Glenville. He goes, you're a pastor? I said, yeah. He goes, man, you got a nice car? I said, yeah, uh, church takes care of me. I, thank you. He goes, I'd like to do what you do. I said, you really? And I said, I said, you know what? I would love for you to do what I do right now. And for that moment, I said, you know what? I was feeling sorry for myself at that moment. I said, I wish you would do what I do right now. I wish you would go to a family that just lost their little baby and tell them why God did that. I wish you would go to the hospital and visit a little girl that just has cancer and now that she has to start going through chemo and radiation. Tell them how God is great. about the car you can drive the stinking car when you get into people's lives and there's pain and there's hurt the only thing that we have is God's love and God's forgiveness it stinks but that's life we can have everybody around us pat us on the back and tell us how great we are and that's not going to change the fact that we need God's love and God's forgiveness because once we go through our junk, once we go through the pain, once we become healed, that's when God allows us to give back to others that have gone and is going through what you went through. That's what a counselor is. That's what a pastor is. A pastor's nothing different a counselor is nothing different than somebody that can give hope to the hurting because experience within their life and the knowledge of God's word. So when you're going through your junk, when you look at your scars of your life, when you look at your face and you see the pain and the scars of your past, what do you do? Either... We can look away from the mirror and act like it doesn't take place. We could put the mask of life on and hide. Or you can look at your emotion and you can lie to yourself and lie to others and bury the emotion deep within your soul and hope it never comes up. But as you and I know something, something will trigger something that is said, 
something that is done or something that you see will trigger something that's buried deep within your soul and it will come up to a point where you do not know how to handle that. You may be the perfect Christian in the world. You may not drink, you may not smoke, you may not chew, and you may not gamble. But that doesn't change the fact that you have pain within your life. And what we must do in your pain, in your weaknesses, is realize I can't do it alone. I need Jesus. And Jesus says this, I stand with my arms wide open, ready and wanting for you to talk to me. There's a, um, a song by 10th Avenue North that says this. In one of the verses, Jesus says, look at these hands at my side. They swallowed the grave on that night when I drank the world's sin so I could carry you and give you life. And then the chorus says this, And I bet your side, and I'll be at your side whenever you fall, in the dead of night whenever you call. And please don't fight these hands because they're holding you and holding you tight. And sometimes when the midst of our pain, we are trying to fight the one that's trying to hold us in our pain. God tries to give us his love and his care and his concern and we give him the stiff arm and we tell him no and he's trying to love us but sometimes in our pain we become so arrogant and we say no to the very people that is trying to minister to us the greatest it is hard it is hard to rescue and it's hard to help somebody I was talking to somebody this week and counseling and he said he has a, a very destructive personality he, he self-destructs all the time and he says what is God trying to teach you and I said God's probably trying to teach you to trust in him and quit self-destructing know what's going to take place and make sure that you know what to do he goes I, I just don't take anybody's help I said that's where we need to have a people that will come alongside you and help you so you do not self-destruct because we all need pain. The pain helps us in the future. It gives us the ability to say no. But the scars of life. Uh, there's a story out of Alabama about a, a young boy that was fishing on the bank beside his father. And the boy was fishing on the side of the bank and up from the side of the bank becomes a crocodile. Or an alligator. I don't know. An alligator, I guess it was. And the alligator came and snatched the, the little child's legs and started pulling that child into that lake. And the dad, not caring about the alligator, jumped into the lake for that boy and grabbed a hold of that boy's arms and started yelling and screaming and fighting back. And just so happens there was a passerby. And it wouldn't be today, but that passerby had a rifle on the back of his truck. Anybody back in the old days used to have a rifle on the back of your truck? <laughs> had a rifle on the back of the truck. He pulls the rifle out and he shoots the alligator. And the alligator releases the boy and the dad pulls the boy to safety. And the boy had scars up and down his legs from the, from the teeth of the alligator. And he was in the hospital and the newspaper reporter came and he started giving a report about what took place at the lake. And he said, he said, can I take a picture of the scars on your legs? And he said, sure. And he pulled up and he had all kinds of teeth marks. And the boy said something that changed the newspaper's way of thinking. He said, but can I show you the scars on my arms? Because my dad never let go. And that's exactly what Jesus is doing for us. In the midst of of this world when it's trying to pull us under and the scars of this life is going Jesus says I'm going to hold on to you and I'm going to keep you and I'm going to pull you into safety and it may be painful I may leave scars but I'm going to remind you I will never let go and we have to remember scars hurt stuff hurts 
But Jesus will never let go in the midst of your pain. We have to trust in him. Everybody, we all have different stuff. We all have different pains. We all have different scars. We all have different emotion. But Jesus can heal every pain. But ultimately, the greatest healing is not down here. The greatest healing that we could possibly have is the healing when we give our life to Christ and we take that last breath and we're ushered into heaven. That is the ultimate healing. And the ultimate healing is just this. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Putting my sin upon your back. I am not guilty of my life. I've given it to you. Then, and only then, can the pain of your past, the emotion and the hurt be given to Christ, and the ointment of forgiveness can be applied to your life. And then when you look back, you can see the mistakes that you have made and the pain that you've gone through, but you know that Jesus has forgiven that. And when you look back at your life because of what Jesus has done, you can say, I'm innocent. I may have scars because of it, but I'm innocent of it because Jesus has forgiven me for everything that I have done. And the only way a child of God can get through the past of the pain and the scars is to understand one thing, that Jesus loves you unconditionally and he will forgive you unconditionally if you ask him, he will do it. That is the greatest healing power ever. It's just God's forgiveness. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, as we come to you, every one of us have our issues. We all have our needs and pains and hurts. But Lord, I ask you right now, as we communicate this to a congregation, to family, to a group of young men, Lord, I know that there's scars. There's pains. And I know that you can heal us and help us and forgive us of every one of our issues. And Lord, so right now, as we pray, I pray this prayer. I pray the prayer of a sinner's prayer. And I'd like to look at you and say that if you have never said this prayer, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, a simple prayer of acknowledgement of Christ can change your life. So if you're not happy where you are spiritually, and you're struggling in life, and you've never been forgiven of your sins, just say this, Dear Father, I need you to forgive me. I need you to come into my heart. And I need you to clean me. I accept that you died on the cross for my sins. And I want to receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Because I know that I can't get to heaven without you. I can't be healed without you. So I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. The greatest gift at Christmas is the gift of Jesus Christ. Not only for salvation, but for our life. Now what's going to take place?